welcome to Model Kit Stuff, um, um, part three of the HMS Antony build for the 80th anniversary of the sinking of the HUD and the Bismarck. So we have a lot of um, resin parts to put on, a lot of photo etch to put on, and it's quite repetitive work. It's uh, all the resin parts are painted, so it's just remove them from their casting blocks and glue them in place. The same with the etch, it's just remove it and glue it in place. I'm using Tamiya's um, lacquer paint for um, this ship's boat here that, that requires um, a wooden top. The, um, the deck tan in the lacquer paint is a darker shade than in their acrylics, so um, I think it looks a lot better. I always thought their acrylic deck tan was a little light, really. A sort of bleached deck. Anyway, um, the lacquer paint goes on really quite nice. It's a much better paint than their acrylic range. I'm going to do the inside of the other ship's boats as well, even though the instructions tell you grey. I'm going to just do the, the uh, structure grey and leave the bottom of the deck in each boat wood because so I believe would have been right where the where where feet are going and there's lots of scuffing. They wouldn't really have painted. They would have had wood that was easier to clean and scrub. Uh, whereas paint would have rubbed off all the time and it wouldn't have looked uh, presentable. And the, the navy would never have put up with that.
that is the last resin part. hardly see these parts. Well that's what we need isn't it? Things not fitting at this stage. So that ship's boat is the smallest one. It's supposed to go between those and it doesn't fit. Okay, the ship's boats are on. Um, I ended up um, putting the davits onto the boat and then attaching the whole assembly um, on. Um, so that looks okay now. Uh, we've got that ship's boat on. Um, on this side what I've done is I've glued it in as best it'll go but it is overhanging the hull which isn't really correct but it, it, it looks like it's where it's supposed to be. So the only thing outstanding is the railings. I'm not going to rig it. I'm too concerned that something will come off. Um, and I think we're going to give it a little wash. Um, so I think the next step um, is a wash before I put those final railings in. So it's now time to make our um, ocean, uh, which will form the base to mount HMS Anthony. Um, and we're using a picture frame um, for the display base um, and I'm using this artist's watercolour paper um, for the um, ocean texture. Um, the, the texture is not dissimilar to um, fairly still sea so I'm gonna, we're going to use that. So um, we're not even going to glue it into the frame. If we cut it out if we um, if we cut it out to the size of this base, then we should be able to just clamp it into the uh, into the picture frame. So first thing we're going to do is just draw around this and cut that out. Yeah, that looks like it'll fit nicely. Perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and build up some colours to give us that sort of ocean look that we're looking for. So I'm looking for a sort of North Atlantic. Um, so that's quite a dark colour, but there is, there is a nice greeny blue hue to the North Atlantic. Um, so we're just going to put layers of paint down until we get where we want to be together. And I'm actually starting with um, 
Tamiya's XF5 flat green, which we're going to use as the base colour. Um, I'm just using a flat brush and we're just going to spread that on and not worry about uh, how even it is. And if we've got any gaps, that's fine as well. Because it's immediately starting to give us that feeling of depth, which is what we're trying to achieve. As we put more colours on, we want it to look like there's depth in there. There we go. So that's my first layer done. We'll just let that dry for a moment. So the next colour I'm using is um, a dark sea blue. In fact, it's the colour that I've been using on my Arizona. I'm just going to thin it down. Um, because of what we're doing, I'm just thinning it with water. I'm not using um, thinners. So we'll let that dry. And then we're going to go in with um, this PRU blue, which I think is a nice deep uh, oceany blue. Um, and we're going to do some streaking over the top. Okay, so I've finished building up my um, layers of paint colour to get to where I wanted to be. So after we'd put the um, dark sea grey down, we mixed a little bit of off-white with it and did some lighter flashes. Then we've given the whole thing another wash in, in sea grey. And then the final colour that's gone on top um, is the uh, dark sea blue quite heavily thinned and we've done a couple of washes of that and got it to where I want so th there's a dark ocean that appears to have a bit of movement in it appears to have a bit of uh, texture to it um, and a little bit of depth so it's quite matte at the moment so what we need and it's been left to dry overnight so what we need to do now is get it looking wet and to do that, I'm going to use um, Vallejo's Gloss Acrylic Varnish, um, which is quite a nice um, shiny varnish. So we're going to uh, put some of that on. And rather than putting it in a palette, we're just going to drop some on and spread it around with our brush. Um, purposefully you'll notice that I'm doing it in the direction that I've done my sort of waves if you like on my, my motion um, I want to keep doing that and keep building up that idea of, of, of some form of uh, tidal force in the water if that's the right term I don't know forget what I'm trying to say um, by doing it this way we get a little bit of texture um, and I want that texture to all be in the same direction so I'm going to give that a minute or two to dry um, and then when that's dried we're going to put it in the display in the picture base and then we can probably give it another another coat then Okay, so I've just put that in the picture frame um, and I'm quite happy with that. So we're ready for putting the little name badge on now. Uh, one of the viewers, um, I forget the name, suggested, found, the, found these on eBay and suggested it might look nice on the display stand and I have to totally agree. So we have our little pin badge. Uh, which has the coat of arms of HMS Anthony on. Now, I already have a mug with this on, um, and I think you can get cufflinks and bits and pieces. Uh, these companies that do all the all the various ship shields and things, you can get a ship shield if you want, but um, this is pretty much um, a fairly good size for it. So, what we can do is find some way of mounting it on there um, I might drill a little hole in um, 
so the pin can go in and do it that way. Need to think about it, but that's the that's the plan. Okay, so we now need to um, put some animation into the um, water here, so it looks like we've got some uh, movement on the ship, and we're going to do that with um, toilet tissue cut into little rectangles, and then um, we're going to get them wet. So I'm simply dipping it into some water. Um, and then we can crush it all up so that we've got like a damp screwed up piece of paper which we can then mould into shape so we can simply put that into place And then whilst it's wet we can start shaping it and then we'll just let it to dry um, it'll go quite hard and then we can varnish it and it and that's it we don't need any any glue that it's just ordinary water we've used it's there's no uh, there's no PVA or anything in it so what we want is a little bit of turbulence right at the front of the ship so I'm just doubling that up and then as the ship moves through the water that turbulence dies down a little bit So we can leave that to dry and that was one little rectangle of paper. So if we just spin around we can have a look at doing some turbulence out of the, the back end there. So I'm actually going to use a smaller piece of paper for that so it's about a thumbnail thumbnail size, a little bit crumpled up again. And even though the piece of paper was really small, it becomes quite large when you put it on the on the model. So we can just pull little bits off 
that we can then use as uh, bits of foamy water effectively. Although life could be hard at sea, it was no easier on land. I asked my grandfather about um, leave during wartime. This is what he had to say. I got most of my leave on Antony. She would go to have her boiler tubes cleaned and that took five days or so. So you got five days leave, but it took a day to get from Scotland to Portsmouth and then back again. So really, you got three days. That was something as well, travelling in the Blitz, with smoke everywhere, bricks and rubble flying through the air. The trains were really cramped, and I travelled on a couple of occasions in the guards van. Then when you got there, you spent most of your time in an Anderson shelter, three inches deep in water, everything musty. In fact, I came home and Mum said she had no space for me, and I had to stay next door with my aunts. We had two evacuees in our room, so there was no space. You felt safer at sea, really. So this completes my build of um, HMS Antony, A-class destroyer in 1700 scale, um, to commemorate the 80th anniversary of the sinking of HMS Hood um, and the Craig's Marine ship Bismarck. I would like to leave the last words with my great uncle and my grandfather. Uh, my great uncle, um, in one of the letters he wrote to me, um, was talking about um, life after retiring. So he'd been um, invalided out of the Royal Navy with a TB spot in the 50s um, and had then gone on to become a um, a gardener which he was very successful at and um, when he retired he filled his life with um, with walking and and doing research uh, and he kept a keen interest in the Navy um, and in fact um, in one of his letters his closing remark to me was that after the Royal Navy everything else was an anticlimax. Uh, in my interview with my grandfather, I asked him um, how did he feel when he heard the news about the end of the Second World War. Um, and he hadn't really anticipated 
it coming. He, he knew things were going well, but they didn't really know that it was about to end. They didn't know how close they were, really. Um, and I said to him, how, do you, how did you feel when you heard the news? And this is what he said. Oh, great relief. We could turn the blessed lights on again at night. Thanks for watching, everyone.